I'm going to start with a broad overview of the eruption so far. We're 80 days into the eruption about now, so I want to provide a little bit of context in terms of similar activity or unsimilar activity in the past 200 years, and then we'll do a quick summary of what's happened in the past week. So the main message is that what we're observing now is uh, unprecedented in the past 200 years in terms of size and scale, but not in terms of process. This has occurred uh, before, particularly during the uh, 19th century, where there were multiple collapses of the summit area and uh, eruptions down in the east rift zone, at least one large one in 1840. So at the summit, uh, I just said that. This is the largest uh, sequence of collapse that we've observed in the past 200 years. In the Middle East Rift Zone, uh, you remember Pu'uo'o. Uh, Pu'uo'o erupted for 35 years. That was the longest lived eruption in the whole East Rift Zone in over 500 years. And it probably set up the conditions that were ripe for lava or magma to be able to travel underground all the way from the summit out to this area. And then the lower East Rift Zone, this is the most voluminous eruption in the past 200 years. It's the highest eruption rate that we've measured for Kilauea. It's uh, many, many times larger or higher than the eruption rate for Pu'uo'o. And that's why there's just so much darn lava pouring across the ground every day, uh, every week. And also, uh, the emission rates of sulfur dioxide gas are very, very high. And they're the highest that we've ever measured for Kilauea. And uh, that is creating quite a bit of poor air, to say the least. So this is a summary of the uh, dates and length of time and volumes of eruptions that occurred in 1840. It lasted for 26 days erupted about 205 million cubic meters. So the exact number may not make that much difference. But look, in 2018, so far, we're 80 days into the eruption, and we're on the order of maybe 450 million cubic meters that have been erupted. So this is about equivalent to 8.5 million cubic meters every day, 8 to 10 million cubic meters. It's just incredible to try to imagine that much lava coming out of the ground. But so it is. In 1955, it was, eruption lasted 88 days and produced about 81 million cubic meters. These are all estimates, of course. We don't have an exact uh, volume. Uh, 1960 was 37 days and 122 million cubic meters. Clearly, this activity now is unprecedented in the past 200 years. Okay, so in the past week, uh, there's been a little bit of uh, channel modification down by Kopoho Crater. It was a week ago, on about July 10th, that the channel became blocked just upstream of Kapoho Crater as sections of the levees broke off, floated down, downstream in the lava channel, and then uh, basically kind of blocked when it, uh, they kind of got stuck in a narrow area. So that led to a backing up of lava, filling up, and overflowing of the channel. And within a couple of days, that resulted in a new channel completely going to the west of Kopoho Crater through there. So it took a more direct shot. In fact, somebody last week asked me, why doesn't the lava just take a straight sh shot and go right down to the coast? Well, it did. So we haven't seen any uh, lava flowing in the old channel out through here uh, in the past week on the surface, but clearly lava is making its way through that part of the old flow because you can see the steam rising along the edge of the coast. Some of these areas up here. So there's a little bit of lava still dribbling into the, into the ocean here and there from either the old uh, flow that's thick in the a'a uh -uh flow, still molten core probably, or maybe some lava is making its way beneath the surface that we just can't see. Uh, this is a, a little photo taken this morning with some sketches. And right uh, at the junction where the original channel went, right here, 
there is still a little bit of overflow activity. So the situation is a little bit tenuous, and it wouldn't be a surprise if there were additional overflows and maybe the channel uh, finds its way back in the old channel or finds uh, a new path somewhere. So that's an area that we're trying to track pretty closely with our overflights and also with the use of the drones during the day and the evening. Uh, this is a, not a very good photograph, but I wanted to show you this is the ocean entry. Uh, on Saturday, it was about 950 meters from the Isaac Hale Park where the boat ramp is. Uh, today is about 750 meters from the boat ramp. So it's moved just a little bit in the past few days. Not, not as a main direction of flow, but as a lateral spreading on the south side of the open channel. So there's uh, where Isaac Hale Park is located right there. And you can see where the active lava is with the, uh, the white steam plume. This is a photograph taken today about noontime from the 1960 uh, Kapoho cone or uh, cinder cone. And we're looking toward the active ocean entry and you see there's quite a bit of vigor in the plume, the white plume in the background. And this may be similar to the kind of activity that occurred yesterday. Uh, this doesn't look quite as strong as, as that activity. And the mechanism for causing those explosions like it occurred yesterday is not really understood or known. We're, we, it, they're occurring offshore a little bit, so you can't actually see what, what's triggering it, but it may be related to lava from that open channel entering the ocean, forming a surface over it, a sort of a, a tube that allows free flow of lava great distances down the submarine slope, and perhaps there was a, a failure of the surface of that lava tube or uh, some sort of a calving effect that damaged that and led to the quick, uh, sudden interaction of a lot of lava and a lot of water and it related and exploded up to the surface. But uh, the scale of the lava entry is so much greater than what we are used to seeing uh, during the Puuo activity, when lava sort of dribbled into the coast a few cubic meters a second. This is on the order of 50 to 100 uh, cubic meters per second, so much, much greater volumes and a higher rate. And so the extent of the hazards uh, might be a little bit greater uh, as this thing unfolds a little bit. Uh, that is along the shoreline. This is a sequence of images uh, that I've been showing you the last uh, couple of weeks, showing you the advance of the uh, ocean entry and the spread to the south. And this was taken today, or made, the map was made on July 16th. So it's still about 750 meters from the uh, boat ramp. Okay, just a few slides for the summit. Uh, activity there is still continuing as usual. We're waiting right now for another summit uh, collapse explosion event. It should happen at any minute or any hour now. And during each of those events, the inner part of the crater floor drops in some sections two to two and a half meters at a time. And what I'm gonna show you is a digital elevation model that was made back in 2009. Here's the old, uh, the entire Kilauea crater. See the cliffs on the outside. This is Hale Maumau. And the little circle there is the lava lake back in 2009. And this is the same scale image digital elevation model taken on, uh, produced from a series of over, uh, helicopter overflights on July 10th. So we go back and forth a little bit. So 2009. And here. This is the part of the uh, crater floor that's dropping that two and a half meters or so every time there's one of these collapse events almost every day. They're averaging a little bit longer, 27, 28 hours, something like that. Okay, I showed you this plot a number of weeks ago, um, and it's trying to capture the size of the collapse in terms of uh, millions of cubic meters. 
here zero to 600. When we started out, uh, we were down here in 2018. Now we're up here, and actually you have to add about an under 90 million cubic meters because it's losing about 13 million cubic meters every day. And this was made from data of, from a week ago. So clearly this collapse is uh, quite large. And um, maybe next week I'll try to see if I can get some slides to show you some of the sketches that were made of collapse events that occurred or when people visited, when Westerners visited the summit area in the 1800s. And these collapse areas were in different locations and much further to the north than the current collapse. So, so far it's on the same, uh, same process, magma draining away from the summit reservoir and entering the rift zone. And then the overlying material doesn't have any more support, so it collapses into that reservoir and probably will keep going until the magma reservoir stops draining away. Okay, thank you.